Um, hi guys, my name is Gautam. I'm a data scientist at Property Guru. Um, and uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about how we ended up using driverless AI uh, and for, for which applications we're using it and what are, what are our, um, how's our journey been so far with driverless AI. So one of the cool things about driverless AI that we like so much is how um, it has integrated with data table and all of this uh, to give an initial insight into our data. So efficient, uh, it basically enables efficient data exploration. Um, I think Joe uh, showed some of the graphs before, uh, the, some of the graphs that Autovis does before, like the outlier and the correlation graph. The ones which we found were um, also quite interesting were the missing heat map. So once you just load, it, load the data into driverless AI, it's going to show you uh, what is the pattern of missing values in that, because a lot of time, um, missing values tell you if there's any problem in the previously in the data pipeline and how you're gathering data. So we found that quite uh, useful. Um, another thing, I think uh, Joe already talked about outlier detection. And basically, these, these two plots are something that we use uh, to get the initial sense, sense of data. Um, whether it is correct or which way we should uh, modify some of them, m modify our pipeline, data collection pipeline, uh, to better suit modeling. Um, what, what we found out with, with doing the initial data exploration is that it, there's also a faster, it also enables faster time to model, which is that it does a lot of the, um, um, the tasks that usually we would be doing by hand in Python. Um, for you. So it does feature engineering, it does feature selection, um, also hyperparameter tuning. Um, so like the, uh, like the uh, cyclic process of data, data science where we are constantly evaluating features and adding more features and iterating through different models, uh, we found that uh, DA, um, data driverless AI um, fastened that process quite a bit. Um, so like you can see in some of the example, I think uh, Joel Richet one one example, but you can see that you know uh, it will it is quite easy to put the data in, into driverless AI and get um, uh, quite quite a bit of lift from the baseline models um, without without us doing anything, um, and it also um, you know it gives a full report of what it actually did um, uh, throughout the process, so. Um, because this process is so iterative, um, what, if, what we are seeing is that it is very e easy for our new joinees as well as um, uh, different cross-functional teams to get started with ML very quickly. So because it is all done through software and all the practices on the feature engineering done here are validated by um, you know, renowned data, sci data scientists, uh, we have like a lot of uh, checkpoints are there, like you know, if you down, if you if someone tries to put data set which is like which is very small and not really representative at all, uh, it'll try to not build the model at all. So things like this allow us to share this software with cross-functional teams like marketing team or a finance team, and they can plug in their data into into driverless AI. They have been doing that, uh, and we have been seeing them uh, interacting with their data much more easily with uh, driverless AI. Uh, the, but our, these are not the favorite, favorite, favorite feature of driverless AI yet. The favorite is the deployment. So recently they, uh, upload, they released this new deployments on serverless, which, uh, which is really amazing because it deploys that Mojo pipeline, which, uh, which um, Joe described earlier, into a serverless endpoint at uh, AWS Lambda, which means that we ended up while we were evaluating models, what we, what we usually do is uh, deploy a model into production and evaluate on live data and see how the model is performing on live data before we actually roll it out. Um, but with this, we were, what we were saying that we can actually, we are deploying multiple versions, versions of different, um, of the same project but different experiments uh, because AWS is, uh, is, cost, is priced by invocations. So we found that this is uh, this to be uh, quite a cost cost effective and a uh, easy way to deploy and test out our models on uh, live data. Um, that's pretty much all we had for now. Thank you so much for listening. Yep. Okay. Um, do we have anything else?
Do we have any questions for? Yeah. Yeah. Can you just tell us about the applications of, of uh, I mean, like specific like business applications for? Uh, for data, yeah. yeah. Um, so we are quite like we've been playing around with uh, driverless AI for almost a month now. So we have been trying out on, on a couple of uh, regression problems. So uh, initially, said to share, like we are mostly working on um, recommendation engines, classification, and image classification problems. But um, with this, we have been seeing out that you know there are a lot of tabular uh, sort of data which can be plugged in. Um, so one thing we noticed that you know if once we got this, and our marketing marketing team was like, yeah, you know, we can have we have. Uh, churn modeling that we can do, so that's something that they have, we have been trying it out. Uh, but that's something that we didn't, we didn't really um, had the bandwidth to, to tackle that particular problem because there are only so many data scientists. But because the AI is so easy to use, they are they are also easy to use. And uh, to add up to that, right? Uh, you know, again, the teams are fairly small, uh, so for them to really evaluate and say, hey, you know, which problem is worthwhile exploring. Uh, H2O kind of helps us get us there very, very fast, right? So once we realize that, hey, you know, even after such sophisticated modeling, you're not going to get accuracy, we know from the get-go that those are not the problem areas that we want to focus on. Uh, so that kind of really helps me, you know, do a quick evaluation, like, is it even worth going down that path, or is it something that, uh, you know, we can get to? So churn modeling was something that came up, we said, all right, you know, it makes sense to go ahead with that, but, you know, the repetitive iterations, uh, makes it much, much easier uh, to go with uh, H2O uh, as compared to just raw modeling, which probably takes a couple of days to even get started. So a question about your Gru lens. Uh -huh. yeah. do, do, do you have a database of every building picture photograph yeah. in the app? Yeah, we do. We have been in the property, like we have owned the hundred percent of the market, right? So we have the baseline of all the buildings. So you know, building up these models uh, is not a harder task. It's how to run them on the mobile it makes it harder. So literally, the app has got a photograph of every single building. It's a deep learning model, so yeah, it's it's a smaller version of that. Yeah. Uh, are you taking the coordinates? Yes, we do. Of course, we need. Right? Otherwise, very difficult to do. Uh, so, uh, I don't quite get uh, for the, you mentioned something at the start about the, uh, how the listings just disappear and things, right? So what? Listings what? The listings once they are sold and things, the yeah. listings just disappear, right? So what is the tying relevance to the uh, AI function? The recommendation piece is part of that portfolio, right? So. When the property comes, right? It's not like you know from the get-go it has got thousands of views and people really love it, right? Uh, so all the listings that that go online or website start with uh, zero views. Zero views, nobody has liked it, nobody has submitted a lead. So how do you recommend, uh, or you know, if you know about collaborative filtering, how do you even start, right? So if nobody has clicked on it or viewed on it, you know, there is nothing that you can recommend, right? How do you get similarity of those buildings? So that makes it a, a, a harder problem as compared to something that you would find in an e-commerce website. Uh, okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Anything else? Uh, another thing, for the net, right, is it the same as like searching for a condo and getting the same recommendation you know? so There are two questions in this. So, in the lens, when you look at the properties, uh, when you point at the building, it will give you the name of the building and the properties that are available for sale and rent. So that's one. The recommendation is still the same. So, but nothing from the lens yet feeds into the recommendation engine. Oh, okay. not yet. But uh, I'm saying, let's say you point at the you point at the building, you get a list of uh, the yeah. these things. Right? It's the same as searching on. The yeah, it does. It is. It's the same. It's a so different way of browsing to the website. Then the use case of the lens is quite narrow. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
especially if you know in the area, right, then you exactly know what your buildings are, right? So nobody needs a lens in there. Especially when you're exploring some new areas, you don't know what that building is, you want to point and find out, it does that for you. So yeah, we understand it's it's a very narrow use case, but it's something that, you know, like I said, you know, it's a beta product. You want to see how well that works out and you know, in that sense, you know, uh, we end up developing a lot of capa capabilities in house uh, to do all these things uh, within our team. So, developing a model that's so light that doesn't suck up your battery uh, and has a equivalent higher accuracy was a very, very hard task. So, yeah. Okay, so, so this is a question. Yeah. So, this is a really good uh, business case. From the roadmap perspective, what what about things that we will get too forward from, from the AMDR? Join my team and I will. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this is not public information, so unfortunately I cannot share. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening on you know your basic uh, machine learning, uh, stuff, simple statistics that gets used all the way up to, you know, you saw the application in your yeah, ALS. Like, I feel that so this is more on the analyzing the data and a lot of the recommendation kind of stuff can be that because now you are working on the data. So that, that's the reason we plan. No, we have, we have uh, a few products, but again, they are not public information, so I won't discuss that. All right. I just want to add a few things. So I want to thank you. For finding this space. This is for him, so if you love him, we don't have to be shut today. <laughs> uh, we are hiring, we're hiring their Sundays in Singapore, and so please find Sundays if you are interested in a position. So their Sundays in Singapore. And the first is about the price. If you want to uh, have questions about the pricing of Java's AI, again, send it to the guy. So don't put a bit of a Thank you for coming again. So have and there's next a 21 day free trial on our website. So if anybody wants to try the product, you can go on to h2o.ai and uh, download the product. You can do it. Uh, it's a 21 day free trial. So you can run your data sets on it, test it, and see how it works for you. So that's one. Thank you. So, um, Thank you guys.